to the Expanding Worlds podcast. I'm your host, Deborah Caldo. I'm continuing with the Grace Hair Profile series. Over the last few weeks, the focus has really been around wider societal issues like giving people more choice in their lives, especially how and where they live, as well as the changing expectations of people with additional needs. But something that remains a challenge is isolation. I think the discussion around isolation and the impact it's had on mental health because of the pandemic, has been a really useful one. But as a parent of a young person with additional needs, I can tell you that my daughter has struggled with social isolation all her life, and it remains one of the things I most worry about for her. An organisation and charity like Grace Air will always be at the front line of supporting people to stay connected. So in this episode, I'm talking about two projects run by Grace Air, the Friendship Group and Active Lives, both of which are about combating that social isolation. But before I talk more about that, let's have a quick word from the show sponsor. Red Giraffe Solutions supports parents of children with additional needs to build a better future for their children. They do this by offering support across the four lines of the Red Giraffe route map. Daily living, purpose, relationships and financial security. If you'd like a free guide to building a better life for your child with ways to get started on each of these four areas, visit redgiraffesolutions.com where you can download the guide for free. Having friends is something many of us take for granted. But for many people with additional needs, friendships don't come easy. And because as children, they are more dependent on us, they don't get the same opportunities to develop friendships across a variety of common interests. And let's face it, building and maintaining friendships is a bit of a minefield anyway. My first guest, Jenny Good, the leader of the friendship group, certainly understands that. And as you'll hear, she's found innovative ways to support people to connect and to create these genuine friendships and connections that we all need. I challenge you not to want to be part of this friendship group, after Jenny has finished explaining what the group is all about. I started by asking Jenny about her background and what she does at Grace Air. So I'm Jenny and I've been with Grace Air for about four and a half years. I started in Active Lives. I now run something called the Friendship Group, which in the first place is an enabling group to come along, try new activities and make friends for adults with learning disabilities and autism. And it's open to anyone. Locally, we do more, but we actually got started in lockdown. So we primarily were doing Zooms, which means we now have members all the way from the United States, (laughs) but mostly we're centered in Brighton and Hove, and we've just recently expanded into Worthing. So we put on loads of activities in the first instance, But now what's happened is just from joining, you know, a dance Zoom or an art Zoom or bowling in the community, people have now really formed their own genuine friendship groups and they've all been trained up on tech so they can use Zoom better than we can now. We're primarily based on Facebook out of necessity because I'm now the only, the leader, but also the sole staff member because we didn't get back our fund. We used to have a big funding pot and we are reapplying to get a whole new staff from the National Lottery Fund. But in the meanwhile, it's just little old me. So I rely on Facebook as the sort of hub. That's where our group, that's where you go to join the group. That's where all the information is. I post the calendar every week. And then I post the individual sessions and the Zoom links. And so everyone's really savvy now on Facebook out of necessity. And we use Messenger to create little chat groups so these guys can go off and socialize on their own. They're so advanced. The ones that have been with us longest don't even need me. They're up and running their own Zooms now. And it sort of became, it started as a friendship activities group and it's sort of grown into a quality of life enhancement group. What I mean about that is through, just through the nature of getting people together to create friendships and relationships, you end up opening up all sorts of other issues, lifestyle issues. So the topics that are important to these guys, you know, like love and relationships. I've been working quite hard trying to get in some relationships and sex training for them because that's a subject that never gets discussed in this community. You know, we help them get jobs. We now have our own work buddies program at Grace Air, which I'm referring them all to, but previous to that, we'd support them to and signpost them all over the community. You know, we help them come out of their shell a bit and get more confident. We give them opportunities opportunities. We've got quite a few what I call member leaders. So they're members, but they're helping me run things. They run their own Zooms. We've got these great success stories of people that have come from day centers and were a little bit institutionalized are now out clubbing on the seafront. Not that they should be, but the point is, is that they can, <laughs> you know? And so, uh, you know, it's it's really hard because one of the things we're always 
talking about charities is measuring impact, trying to get funding. And it's it's really individual journeys. You know, we always use these words like person-centered and co-produced and service user-led. Well, this group genuinely is that, all those things, and not in a tick boxy way either. And it's beautiful to see, you know, one of my members was so shy. And some people, when they're new, they come on the Zooms to meet everyone. And the group is so welcoming. That's the other lovely thing. So the people that say to me ahead of time, oh, Jenny, I'm not so sure if I want to come. I may not have my video on. I may not talk. And then, bosh, in they come. They're instantly welcomed. You know, you said you were anxious. You had all these phobias and anxieties, and you're right in there. And I think that's because the group is so lovely and welcoming. And one of our shyest members is now running their own session. And the first one they did... I swear, the next day they were a totally different person. It had just given them this confidence and they just exploded in bloom. And, you know, their parents were calling me and thanking me and all this. I didn't do anything. I just gave them a tiny opportunity. And then you sort of realize, ah, you know, this is what it's all about. So that now they're sort of getting small opportunities in leadership roles. They've had loads of opportunities to be in different films, projects we've done internally. But also one of the things I've done in my previous role as the social media coordinator was to reach out to every single learning disability and autism charity in Brighton at least and beyond and making partnerships with them has been amazing as well so now these guys have all kinds of opportunity to go on radio on carousel we've been part of tv programs we've been part of films we were part of the rethink disability campaign but they love it there last night we did what not to say to someone with a learning disability or autism and it was so powerful it was heartbreaking actually some of the things that have been said to them and so we're making we're always making amazing videos exciting projects but also it's amazing how open they are and how lovely and resilient for the things that have happened to them they are the most amazing group, and that's why it does fire me up that they have to bear this big, heavy, negative label, disabled. And so I've worked pretty hard to sort of fight against the label being the first and foremost thing that people see. There's a person there, and that these people are not only the loveliest and greatest, they're, they're so abled in ways that the neurotypical people are not. Like, just look at the comment section of any video on the internet. The nastiness <laughs> is just unbelievable. Whereas in this group, there's support, there's genuine caring, there's, are you okay? If someone says something negative about themselves, the whole group will jump in and big them up and you call these people disabled? I don't think so. I mean, people talk about any positives come out of the pandemic. Do you think that this ability to use Zoom has opened up the world for some people that maybe wouldn't have come out to a friendship group that was face to face? Yeah, well, one thing, because as soon as we were allowed back out, Everyone was like, okay, stop doing the Zooms, go back out. And I'm like, yeah, but there's loads of people that don't want to go back out. But also, we didn't realize there's pockets of people that don't have this great service and resource that Brighton does. And also, mobility issues. I used to run the dance and the drama sessions in the theater. The range of abilities was crazy. You'd have people that could, you know, recite a whole play worth of lines and do a dance routine and the whole lot. And then you've got someone who's nonverbal, who's relegated to their chair and can't even move. It's a very different experience. Whereas on Zoom, guess what? They have the same experience. They're all in their little squares. And when we talk about equality, Zoom creates this great equality because you just see people's faces, everybody's clapping along and doing whatever, but for mobility issues, Zoom became a really huge opportunity. So absolutely, it's opened up loads of possibilities. And I think we were a bit too quick to sh try and shut them down. I think there's so much opportunity in keeping the Zooms and, and ours are only ever expanding. Well, that seems to be the way that things are moving, doesn't it? So it's no different for any community if it opens up those opportunities. You mentioned before about all the other things that came out of it. And one of the things I always felt, one of the reasons I'm a big fan of, of having a purpose is because I think a purpose then leads to relationships because you get a paid job, for example, you meet other people. But you're actually saying the other way around as well when you have friendships. And it's a bit like having a network, isn't it? A network of people that might know something that you didn't know that you can then harness. Does that happen that you said about people helping each other with work and helping each other with other things? Yeah, well, they certainly support each other on how to use Zoom, how to get on, how to run the sessions. 
loads of these guys are DJs. There's more DJs in this group than in LA, if you can believe it. But yeah, they, they're so supportive of each other. So one of the things, it's, it's a bit tricky. They have to learn how to share audio in a certain way. And so, you know, a lot of people find that first time a bit tricky and they're all helping each other and supporting each other. Also, there's a couple of people, you know, you underestimate if they don't communicate, you don't actually know the extent of their skills. And there's a lot of really tech savvy people and they sort of signposted each other to certain training and certain jobs and certain initiatives available in the tech industry, which I found amazing. I think you can see there the impact that Zoom has had. Other platforms are available, of course, but there's been some positives as well as negatives. As Jenny talked about, many people are able to access things that simply weren't possible because suddenly we're all very much equal in terms of the technology that we use. And of course, there's a geographic impact as well, which can also open up options for people who don't have something like a friendship group in their local community. In the second part of this episode, I'm moving on to talk more about a traditional model of social interaction, the sort of more face-to-face -face element. And this is all part of the Active Lives program at Grace Air. But you'll also hear that Zoom has had a positive impact here as well. I'm talking to Colleen Matham, who works for Grace Air, and Mario Antoon, who uses the services provided through the Active Lives program. This really is also a conversation about the value of being creative and the role that programs like Active Lives can have on helping people not only feel less isolated, but help them find things that they enjoy, or maybe even to help them find their passion. You can see how talented Mario is, by the way, if you check out the images that we're using for this episode on social media. Sometimes we all need a bit of support to take that first step towards getting involved, talking to people, and that's what Active Lives is all about. So I signed off here by asking Colleen to tell me a little bit about herself. And as you'll hear, she shares her rather interesting taste in pizzas, which I have to confess, I've, I probably would like myself, if I'm completely honest. Sure, if I was to give you a random fact about myself, I'd let you know that I like capers and raisins and spinach on my pizza. I know that sounds like a bit of a busy flavour mix, but all together it goes well together. The contrast, the sweet and the salty, the difference and variety and how they complement each other. I've worked at the Avondale for quite a long time now and one of the reasons I enjoy being there is because of the different people that I know and all the different activities that we do. Of course, we've had to put some of the activities on hold while we've all been going through this new period of time. But we've found new ways of staying connected, such as sessions on Zoom and outdoor sessions where we are free to be with the group safely. Mario, you were telling me earlier about doing cricket with Andrea. Yeah, so like playing cricket and then like practice uh, hitting with the bat and throwing the ball. And then enjoy throwing some clubs, uh, dry clubs, and then balance so balance the ball like that and then put it on the head. Put it on the head? So they so balance the, balance oh. the ball on the head and we then do catching, catching competition. Like throw the ball and then divide to three groups and then we throw the ball and then, we, then if you drop the ball, we go back. And then on, on the Zoom sessions, this is very much where we first got to know each other a little bit better because we didn't have many sessions together at the centre before. Yeah. But we did drawing sessions together on Zooms, didn't we? I quite like that. That was a, a time to be able to be in someone's, well, on your desk space, really. And it was more of a catching up, a yeah. drawing session. you sharing your music and chatting and seeing people, catching up with them, seeing them how they are. Yeah and trying out different techniques as well, yeah. how to draw the eye. So how to draw the eyes with pencil, how to make the shading, how to use the shading. You hold the pencil and then, then you shade softer first and then like that and then you use it nice and soft. Active Lives, is that exactly what it is about being more active in your life? Yes, Active Lives is activities that we're able to do. So either meeting at different hubs or outdoor activities like health walks, living skills as well. As the program is opening up more and we're able to do more things, more of the sessions that we used to do will be coming into play. So things like theatre, scenery production, printing, mosaics, a big favourite, and the sports sessions as well. Yeah, and I did like um, mosaics, the creating in the art room I did like uh, creating something. Lots of people say they really like that session because you're able to take your time and slow down to puzzle down, puzzle the, the design together. And they find that quite mm. 
and to to, to create the, the, the film s- spaces so like a uh, small space big space yes yes the negative space is quite important in mosaics isn't yeah. it bending the the pieces so that it catches the light as well oh, yeah. now emma was telling me that you did health walks in with art yeah so we went so we went with uh Gerda. we went to the park did you do any drawing while you were there mm, mm, no no just okay. when walking and then saw different dogs and people and well yeah. it's nice to be out and about and getting your inspiration from nature i like doing that myself and i think the center is hoping to do more health walks where we do get the exercise we have the social side of it we get to catch up with people but then also be able to do some work in our sketchbooks for inspiration to be able to bring them and make other works from that is the art just for being creative or do you want to sell it or is there sort of that part of it as well i'm looking at some of the art and thinking well that that just is very 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 good very professional now this image has been selected for our may open house which means your image is going to be in the brochure the flyers the catalog the (coughs) race air website what's the open house oh that's where we open the angel cafe the Mm. half cafe shops and this uh, fruit and then that they, they put the picture in the frame and people can see it. And they can buy it, you say. And then, then they can yeah. buy it, okay. yeah. We also have a unit at the open market and sometimes it's used for sessions <coughs> and sometimes it's used for selling artwork as well. In the past we've had work placements there so people get to learn how to use the tools, how to interact with customer service and that sort of thing. Do you think that's a good part of what my impression of Grace Hair over the week has been one of the really nice things is that having the different apartments and things that are available like travel buddies yes so that's i mean that's important isn't it to be able to get to things yep absolutely. because active lives i suppose only works if people can get to things is that being is that key as well that people are isolated they can come and do whatever they want to do and having that absolutely and it's about get, getting skills being uh, expressive finding what you like being around people you know Friendships are very important in relationships. And it's one of the things that keeps you, uh, well, I've been here quite a long time, and it's because it's a, f- a very difficult place to move on from. Maria, do you like coming in here? Rather I, think, I think I'd rather come here, do some art, and have some fun, and then do some butcher and do my yeah. To meet other people and to... Yeah, to have, a, to have a chat. To have a chat, I mean, that's key to our lives, isn't it? Yeah, we sometimes, like. yeah, sorry. Sometimes it's just good to be able to see Toby downstairs in the cafe. Uh, Toby runs the cafe, and sometimes it's just nice to be around Toby and hear, catch up with all the gossip about everyone's everyday lives, really. Just have a laugh. Thanks for listening. I hope you found this episode as life affirming as I did. Spending time with others, pursuing our passions, that's what makes life worthwhile. Next week, I'm talking to Gary Cunningham about a scheme called Travel Buddies, which is an independent travel scheme. And it's something quite a few of my previous guests have mentioned. And this is, I think, because when it comes to living independently, going shopping, seeing friends, it's all going to involve travel skills. So it's an essential skill that our young people need to have. If you've enjoyed what you've heard, then it'd be great if you could leave a review wherever you listen. And of course, feedback and ideas. I really want those. I really want people to tell me their stories. So if you know of anyone or you'd like to be on the podcast, then please get in touch, Deborah at expandingworlds.com. And of course, I'd love to connect with you as well. You can find me on Instagram at Deborah Caldo.